The following is a special program honoring the life and work of Reverend Theodore M. Hesburgh, CSC. There's an old saying about this town, in Washington, if you're looking for a friend, get a dog. But 11 presidents, countless cabinet members, Republican or Democrat, senators, congressmen and women, liberal and conservative, over the past seven decades would have meant that old saying. They'd tell you, get Ted Hesper. For a virtually penniless man, he had one of the most influential gifts for getting people who typically disagree to agree when it mattered the most. Now the key to the success of the civil rights movement was to keep it from being a radical leftist movement and recognize that it was truly a movement coming out of the Judeo-Christian U.S. constitutional tradition of justice. Well, nobody could represent all of those forces uh, like Father Ted could. And he did it in such a quiet, unassuming, non-judgmental way that uh, when he was with you, uh, you didn't have to worry about who was against you. He honored me in my first year in the White House uh, by inviting me to Notre Dame when human rights was becoming the foundation of our foreign policy. His reputation as one who stood for and worked for world peace is, goes far beyond any political boundaries, far beyond the boundaries of the United States of America. For a man who would be advisor to popes and presidents, Father Ted was always first and foremost a priest. May God bless him and keep him. Good evening, everyone. As you know, Father Ted Hesburgh filled many roles throughout his life. Spiritual leader, ally of popes and presidents, even representative to the International Atomic Energy Commission. But beyond any other title, the one he cherished most was Father Ted, humble servant of God. Father Ted took the helm at Notre Dame during a time of great change for the church and for the nation. And his steady hand, guided by his fundamental decency, helped to turn Notre Dame into a world-renowned center of higher learning, a place where faith and reason, clergy and laity, could all come together and flourish. Fifty years ago, Father Ted was one of the six leaders serving on our nation's Civil Rights Commission. There's a story that I love from the early years of that commission, back when Father Ted was a founding member. As you can imagine, those discussions were often long and difficult because, as he later wrote, the commission agreed on very little outside of the Constitution. So when it came time to write their final report, Father Ted had an idea. He took them all to the Notre Dame retreat up in Land Lakes, Wisconsin. And there he said, they realized that despite their differences, they were all fishermen, in the literal sense. So they fired up the grill, caught some walleye, and ultimately the report they produced served as a major influence on the Civil Rights Act of 1964. That's the spirit that we celebrate today. A leader, a thinker, a man who always saw that we are all children of God, and that together we can do incredible things that we can't do alone. It's an example worth following in our own lives as we reflect on his. Rest in peace, Father Ted. May God bless you all, and may God bless the United States of America.
when asked how he might be remembered. Father Theodore M. Hesper, CSC, asked that we remember these words of Scripture instead. God has chosen the weak of the world to confound the strong. For a man, a priest, whom we'll never forget, the response was to offer advice. The little boy from Syracuse who wanted nothing more than to be a priest would spend his entire adult life proving day after day, year after year, decade after decade, that making history, changing the world, and confounding the strong might only be possible if indeed you are among the weak. Hardly a penny to his name, nor more than a simple cot to sleep on. He accomplished these things and so many more we can never fully know of as a simple priest who just happened to be the president and then the president emeritus of the University of Notre Dame. When you think of this great man, it's hard to avoid thinking of a statement that's very simple and profound that he made years ago. All I ever really wanted to be was a priest. Father Ted would talk to Jesus very simply, very humbly, very directly, as if Jesus were right there with him. And of course, Jesus was right there with him. If you walk around the campus, where well, you can be sure he's preached and he's talked time after time through the years. He's left to his spirit in each of these places. He gave every minute of his life for the people he loved, Notre Dame itself. You just have to say that Ted Hesburgh is and always will be the spirit of Notre Dame. He was a very good man. He had such a good life and such a full life that, you know, I think we just have to be grateful that he was here and that we had him. You know, I'm just, his life was fulfilled, I think. Fulfilled for Ted Hesburgh means from the moment he arrived at Notre Dame as a seminary student in the 1930s until the day he left this earth, he never stopped working, never had an average day, and was never satisfied that his work was done. He was never satisfied. He was never satisfied that it was good enough. And that's built into the character of Notre Dame. The little boy who would be priest was destined also to serve popes, presidents, and the everyday people for whose civil rights he'd fight endlessly over the next several decades. First, he'd take a short ride over the Syracuse countryside in a rickety biplane. The idea of flight and especially speed would fascinate him for the rest of his life. Hesburgh once said that the thrill and catharsis of high-speed flight is a world onto itself. Nearly 50 years later, in recognition of all that he'd accomplished on behalf of the country he loved so much, President Jimmy Carter asked if there was anything he could do for Hesburgh. The man who'd never once asked anything for himself thought briefly, and then asked for a ride on the world's fastest airplane. Though classified, one of the military ground controllers sensed something different about this flight. As the SR-71 passed overhead, he radioed, Hey, you've got a priest up there. Hesper radioed back, God bless you too. The boy who once toured Syracuse from a rickety old biplane had just set a new world speed record. Unofficial, of course. 
officially, it was all that he accomplished prior to this day that was so much more impressive. I was in the government in the Kennedy administration. I've known presidents, I've known chief justices, I've known CEOs of major businesses, I've been very lucky. The one man I regard as a great man is Father Ted Hesburgh. When Ted got ordained, he chose St. Paul to be his patron as an ordained person because of the fearlessness of St. Paul. In 1938, while studying for the priesthood in Rome, Another student called Hesburgh to the window so that he might see Adolf Hitler as he drove past their villa. Hesburgh's response, I wouldn't walk 10 feet to see that bomb. Nobody lives forever, but we leave behind, we leave behind values. And in Father Ted's case, those values are the highest values. That's the priesthood thing. Uh, he expects something of priests. He, he expects some courage and some prophetic witness. And uh, he delivers. Hesburgh returned to the States as war erupted across Europe. And on June 4th, 1943, a year before D-Day at Normandy, nine years after having arrived in South Bend, was ordained a Holy Cross priest as he emerged from the east door of Sacred Heart Church for the first time as Father Theodore M. Hesburgh, CSC, the 26-year-old paused and then dedicated his life to the same trinity inscribed over the door in honor of Notre Dame alums who gave their lives in World War I. God, country, Notre Dame. Now eager to serve as chaplain, aboard a U.S. aircraft carrier in the Pacific. Hesburgh needed to earn his Ph.D. in Washington first. He plowed through the work in record time, but as the war ended, he was assigned a teaching job and made chaplain to returning G.I.s at Notre Dame instead. No one, least of all Hesburgh, knew that Notre Dame was a permanent assignment. Within seven years and without ceremony whatsoever, he was simply handed the key to the president's office by Father John Cavanaugh. And for the next 35, he'd transform Our Lady's University physically, academically, and especially in the eyes of the nation. Today we're on the verge of a great adventure. As a force for good in the world. He meant so much. The world needs more Father Hesburgh's. The priest's priest, complete in every way that you can think of. He had our complete respect. Historians will be studying Ted Hesburgh for generations. Here's a man who served the presidents as an advisor and carried the title of ambassador for, what, six or seven different times. Some people leave a legacy which is immortal. A hundred years from now, people will be talking about Father Ted Hesburgh. Setting a blistering pace from the very beginning, this young priest would bring academics to the same national prominence as athletics, invigorate governance of the university itself forever by introducing a lay board of trustees, and open the doors to co-education, women, for the first time in 130 years. I was going up the steps of the law school and Father Ted was coming down the steps. And I said, hi, Father. And he said, hi, Sheila. And I thought, here's a man who can get anybody in the world on the telephone. And he remembered my name. Father Ted was a rock star. People wanted to be next to him, even when we were undergrads. If Father Ted was on campus, you knew because the light in his office was on. In other words, he, he stayed up all night, practically. Though his tenure was marked by the most tumultuous period in modern American history, he was neither absent from nor shy about the moral obligation 
to be involved in the process of shaping life on this planet. It was a terrible, terrible time for America. People were thirsty for the sort of leadership he provided. When called and asked to drop what he was doing to attend a civil rights rally with Martin Luther King in Chicago, the same rally that the mayor and the archbishop had both declined to attend, Hesper paused to look at his watch and then said, what time? This is the man we celebrate and love. We all suffer doses of discouragement, he once said, but they're distractions for the most part. With faith in God and in our fellow humans, we can aim for the heights of human endeavor and reach them too. I knew I wanted to be in service work. Uh, I thought that medicine might be the way to go. Um, didn't get a lot of support from other people. Father Ted said, I'll make things happen for you. And at that moment, I had just been invited by probably one of the great Americans of the 20th century. He had just opened a door for me to walk through. How could I fail? How could I fail? Hesburgh worked tirelessly on the most vexing moral issues of the day. Nuclear disarmament, landmark civil rights legislation that effectively ended apartheid in America, amnesty for Vietnam draft evaders, immigration reform, peace and human rights worldwide. His words are powerful, and you immediately recognize you're in the presence of somebody great. And when he retired as president after 35 extraordinary years, he just kept working on all the same problems, including a few more, usually until two in the morning when he'd finally go home to the same small room, same simple cot he'd been sleeping on, year after year. When asked what qualities were needed more than any other, and if one person could still make a difference in today's world, the boy whose only wish was to become a priest, the boy who changed the world, had this to say. Looking back over the years of my life, I can see clearly what we needed most and need now. Faith, vision, courage, imagination, and ingenuity. When there weren't a lot of voices agreeing with him, he still did what he thought the Holy Spirit wanted done. Let the chips fall. One person can make a difference. The most important thing in his life was that he was a priest. And no one knows what he or she is capable of doing until he or she tries. He was not an apologist for his beliefs. He'd bring people together and he'd stand on principle. It's his turn in heaven, looking down and applauding at each one of us. We just have to be grateful that he was here and that we had him. One of the major figures of our time. Thank you, Father Ted. I hope he enjoys heaven. He changed our lives. So thanks a lot, Father Ted. Remember for me those wonderful words of scripture. God has chosen the weak of the world to confound the strong. Father Theodore M. Hesper, CSC.
And until we meet again, may God hold you in the very palm of his hand. Thank you.